The whole center of the Christian church, Christian faith, was the death of Christ on the cross and his resurrection. In the Old Testament, they were saved by anticipating and looking forward to it. Now we're saved by looking back. Hence the communion service and the importance of the communion service because now we remember week after week, we remember the sacrifice, the blood of Jesus when he said uh, in the upper room, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, the new covenant in my blood. And he they took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. So our salvation is looking back. Okay. So he said, that's it. Uh, the men were sent off, went to Antioch. They gathered the church together. This is verse 30. And they delivered the letter. And in verse 31, the people read it and were glad because of its encouraging message. Verse 32, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the brothers. So you now have these men from Jerusalem encouraging the Gentile believers. Okay, have you got it? Verse 33, after they spent some time there, they were sent off by the brothers with the blessing of peace to return to Jerusalem. Verse 35, but Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch where they and many others taught and preached the word of God. Right, oh dear, because now we come to another problem. You've seen the problem of the, of the doctrine, now you have a different problem in verse 36. Because sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and revisit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Yeah, go back to all the churches that you founded and meet the brothers and see what's happening. Now, in verse 37, Barnabas unfortunately wanted to take John, John Mark, with them. But verse 38 says... Paul did not like it. <laughs> he thought it wise. He didn't think it wise to take him because he deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. In verse 39, now Paul and Barnabas had such a sharp disagreement between themselves. Oh boy, oh boy, look what's happening. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. After all that they'd been through, after all the miracles, after all these new churches, after all the miracles that they'd seen and the powerful testimony that they had, and Paul and Barnabas had carried a powerful testimony now for some years of what God had been doing. And everywhere they went, for example, if you go back into chapter 15, um, uh, you find that when they came to Jerusalem, this is in verse 4, when Paul and Barnabas came back, they were welcomed by the church to whom they reported everything God had done. And uh, as they were traveling, uh, in, it says in verse 2, Paul and Barnabas were appointed to go to Jerusalem. And as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. So this was a powerful witness, these two men, Paul and Barnabas. Now, now, what's happened? They've fallen out. So you come to verse 38 again. Paul didn't want to take him. So he didn't want to take John Mark because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and hadn't continued with them in the work. So verse 39, they had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. So now Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. But Paul, verse 40, chose Silas and left, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. 
he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. You know, it's, it's troubling sometimes when brothers work together and then they fall out and disagree and one might have thought this was not a disagreement on doctrine because they had all been in Jerusalem and had agreed the new doctrine, the new teaching, but yet they fell out simply over who went with them. And it must have been very strong. Paul didn't trust uh, this man, John Mark, because he failed them. And I understand him. And so Barnabas took him and went to Cyprus. And I notice it says in verse 40, Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So Paul is now carrying Silas, and you'll find out that from here on it's Paul and Silas, not Paul and Barnabas. But it doesn't mean that they didn't preach. It meant that Barnabas was going to evangelize with John Mark. Yeah, praise God. And Paul was going to evangelize with Silas. Praise God. You know, we don't all go in the same direction. Uh, I know one criticism I had from a quite a very famous American preacher who traveled with me in Eastern Europe, and he said, David, you want a bigger vision. He said, you want a vision of the world. I said, no. God has given me a vision for Europe and Russia and Israel, and that is my vision, and I'll do that. And in the end, we did actually part. We did disagree. We did finally separate because I knew where God had called me. And the evidence is there. You look at my life, there's absolutely no question that it's right. The other brother I went to be with the Lord some years ago. <laughs> he was older than me. I loved him. We loved each other. We worked together for some years in the Soviet Union. But it was just a mark that he didn't fully understand the call of God on my life. But God used him. God used him in his own individual way. Um, I can remember even meeting, uh, I was very friendly with Reinhard Bonnke and meeting with him once. He'd just come back from South America. And he said to me, he said, it's very interesting. But he said, I know that the anointing of God is on me in Africa. And I went to South America. He said, there was no anointing there. He said, I know where God has called me. I'm the same. I know where the anointing is. It's where I'm going. It's where I've been. And it's where I'm going now. God bless you.